It's week 11, day 70 of my full-time chronic pain rehabilitation journey. My name's Jason. Today I'm going to talk about the one thing you can't fight without, self-love. I'm going to share with you how to find it and nurture it. First though, a status update. I got a call from my ketamine clinic indicating there was some kind of an insurance problem, but when I tried to call them back, they were closed on Friday, so I had all weekend to stew over what was wrong. And in my mind, I imagined that for some reason, the insurance company decided I was no longer worthy to have ketamine treatments, even though they're helping me a ton, and I really want them. Well, when I called them back today, it turns out it was just a problem with the pharmacy, they were filling the prescription incorrectly, and we corrected that really simply. So I guess the moral of the story is don't try to guess what's wrong until you actually find out because I wasted a lot of energy fretting about whether or not my psychedelics were going away and they were never really in jeopardy. So all I had to do was reschedule my appointment for today, tomorrow. Problem solved. My new doctor that's been helping me with dry needling and traction on my back has started doing a new therapy designed to help mobilize the area of my back that is hard like a brick and started doing that today. So it's a little more aggressive, so there's a chance I'm gonna feel some pain and feel some backlash from it. But I'm optimistic because the fact that he feels like he can start doing that means my spine is moving in the right direction. As for how I feel, this morning I woke up kind of weary again. I just felt tired and burdened by the regimen that I've been following. It's so involved and so intensive that I just get tired of doing it. And so I was just generally unmotivated. And now I'm actually the opposite. I'm very motivated. I want to fight harder than ever. And so I guess the natural question is what changed? Which leads me to my tip today, which is listen to YouTube self-help and motivational videos. There are so many of them that are good. They can literally turn your mood around and give you a lot of food for thought to help you on your journey. Um, this was instrumental in changing my mood today. So I will give a quick shout out to Ed Millette uh, whose videos have helped me in many ways. Thank you, Ed. On to today's topic, which is finding and increasing or nurturing self-love. This is hard to do. Um, people that struggle with chronic pain um, typically start to get down on themselves. They tend to identify with things that are wrong in their lives, their body, their inability to have high energy, play with their kids, uh, they just feel like kind of general all around failures and it's just because their bodies are failing them. They don't have the energy to be the best self that they want to be and it's just a downward spiral. So how do you turn that around? And I think I have a formula for it. I've been working on this over the course of my journey. I think I have it kind of figured out. So there's a foundational piece which is you have to find something within you, some innate attribute or attributes that you like about yourself and start to identify with those. Well how do you do that? Well I figured it out by um, behaving poorly in a couple of scenarios. Um, often these um, poor showings, if you will, um, demonstrate something good about myself that I actually want to encourage and foster and bring out. So um, recently I talked about having a, an emotional meltdown and there was some collateral damage. My daughter was crying. I hurt the feelings of my wife. And while that revealed something ugly about me, it also revealed something, the remorse that followed revealed something that was actually quite positive, which is, I do care about them. I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I want to be a positive and uplifting influence in people's lives. And so me feeling really down on myself after acting like an ass, in my own words, um, actually reveals that there is a part of me that is worthy and good and worth fostering and fighting for. And so now I'm going to fight against the emotional... Um, the messy emotional outbursts and try to bring out this other side of me that was the remorseful side, the side uh, that wanted to do the right thing. And if we can get him to do the right thing the first time, we don't have to go through the whole remorse, remorse scenario, right? That's the, that's the plan anyway. So in your life, when you have these uh, messy emotional outbursts or you do something that you feel bad about later, um, pay attention to how you feel because this can often reveal again, positive attributes about you that you might be overlooking because you're so down on yourself for what you did that you can't see them. As for how to nurture self-love once you find that nugget or morsel that acts as the foundation of self-love, uh, it's pretty simple. You have to make yourself number one in your own life. This was hard for me to do. It felt unnatural. And it's really a radical reorientation for me. Um, 
And my, my initial thought was, isn't that selfish? Um, if I put myself first, am I not just giving the shaft to other people? And the answer is no, it really isn't selfish. Uh, it is not immoral, it's actually necessary. Now, self-interest run amok can be a problem, but not having any self-interest at all, or very suppressed self-interest, can also be very problematic. Um, there is a, a philosopher, 20th century philosopher named Anne Rand, who pointed out the importance of self-interest. Now, she elevated it to sort of the premier virtue. I wouldn't go that far, but I do believe it is a virtue, um, as long as you don't use it in excess. Um, but it can, it's, it's necessary. You have to have some self-interest, some sense of self-worth, putting yourself above uh, the needs of, or at least at the level, not say, I would say above, at the level of other people's needs. You're not below them, but you at least bring yourself up so you're at, at par with them. And Anne Rand's uh, philosophy, the part of, that I like about it the best, is that she believes human beings are ends in themselves, which means each, each human being, each individual, has value and worth in and of themselves. And it's not, that they're, it's not because they're a member of some collective or some group that they derive this value and that their needs and wants should not be subservient to the needs of the collective. And that's a philosophy I happen to agree with. So here's some examples of what goes wrong when you have too little self-interest or when you have sort of a subservience mindset, when you put yourself be below the needs of others. Um, this example, I think, was pretty common in LDS culture up until recently, which is um, mothers would aspire to be housewives um, they would try to take care of their families the best they could, take care of, their, care of their husbands the best they could. And while, again, those things aren't bad in and of themselves, they can be a problem if, um, if women lose their sense of identity just to that, meaning all they do is take care of other people, uh, the members of their family or their husbands, and they kind of lose a sense of self. They don't pursue their own interests, their own talents. Um, they don't develop themselves in any significant way. And I think you can see how too little self-interest there is a problem. And I'm not really going out on a limb. This is a pretty straightforward example. Um, another one would be before I had my ayahuasca experience, again, a psychedelic, that kind of woke me up and gave me a glimpse of something that I liked about myself, I would not have inconvenienced my employer because I would have thought, oh, uh, it's more important that I fulfill my responsibilities to them than it is to take time off for me or... I actually didn't have enough self-worth to believe that if I lost that job, I could get another one because I was just so downtrodden. I don't believe that anymore. Um, and I, or, or I would have thought, oh, I need to be bringing in the bacon for my family um, so I can take care of them. That's more important than me taking care of me. I was always on the back burner. I was always the last person uh, to get attention, which is not correct. Um, I at least need to put my needs on par with that of my employer and my family. And in some cases, I actually need to go above and beyond, um, you know, the, in the precedence hierarchy, I need to be up a little bit higher than those things under certain scenarios. Um, and so here are some guidelines for um, figuring out whether or not you're nurturing your self-love and increasing it over time or whether you're going in the wrong direction. So the first is, do you treat yourself at least as well as you treat others. And so, for example, with my recent emotional outburst, which I'm not going to talk about after this video because I'm really tired of talking about it, uh, I imagined myself as either a complete stranger, someone that I saw in Harmon's who did something similar, or I could imagine my own child doing something like this, even as an adult. And how would I respond to them? And the answer is a lot nicer than I was inclined to respond to me. So I'm not going to beat myself up more than I would beat up a stranger or my oldest child. In fact, with those people, I was inclined to reach out with love and try to help them overcome that habit of having outbursts. So I at least need to do the same for myself. And then the next thing is ask yourself, are you striving towards something that fills you with meaning and purpose in your life? Do you have something like that? And if you've given up all your hobbies and you're not really pursuing interests outside of things that allow you to subsist, like working, then you're probably not developing that sense of self-love. You're not nurturing it. Um, an example of me doing that would be creating these YouTube videos. Journaling my journey and sharing it with you um, is an example of something I want to do to help other people. Um, 
uh, I want to help other people that have given up and that have fallen into uh, a trap where they don't feel self-love for themselves. They don't even know where to find it, and they certainly don't know how to nurture it. And then the last thing I'd ask you to ask yourself is, do you do hard things for yourself, again, for yourself, even if you don't want to? Um, are you willing to change your diet to improve your health? Are you willing to exercise consistently, especially on days when you don't want to? I certainly didn't want to this morning, but I went to the gym anyway. I went to all my doctor's appointments. And I did that, not at the time because I loved myself, but now I see that that actually is what was going on. I did hard things for me because I love me. Um, are you willing to take psychedelics if it would help your mind, help bring you back from a state of depression or alleviate anxiety? These are just some examples, but they're hard things and they're oftentimes when you're not gonna feel like doing any of them, but you need to do them. They're necessary for you. If you love yourself, you will do these things or at least start striving to move in that direction. And when you don't feel like doing it, you hunker down and you do it anyway, again, because you're motivated by self-love. This is the key to fighting for your life. You have to love yourself. Uh, if you don't nurture, find and nurture that self-love, you will not give your all, and it's going to take everything you have to win the fight. If you find my videos helpful, please pass them along and subscribe. And until next time, keep fighting for your life.